This is the second video in the HP 9830A desktop calculator repair series. In the first video we found that the mains input filter socket had failed and also the mains uh, control switch, the on-off switch, had uh, also failed. So what I'm doing in this video is trying to get the basic power supply working. So I found um, an alternative um, socket. It's not identical but it's close enough that uh, it will do the job. Uh, once it's installed then, as I said, it's not quite the same but uh, it will be almost impossible to tell from the outside other than the hole in the back panel is very slightly too big for this socket but it's, uh, it's within a millimetre so um, it, it will look fine. I've taken all the parts off the rear panel that I intend to. Uh, this is not my machine so I'm not doing a full restoration, this is just uh, really a repair and a, a tidy up. I've cleaned up the flash marks, um, actually went really deep so it's quite a, an event. Um, there was quite a lot of uh, moisture damage in this corner of the motherboard. I've cleaned it up as best I can, one of the through hole um, connections seemed to be open so I've repaired that, cleaned it up, I've cleaned the connections and so what I'll do now is fit the socket, bypass the main switch, I haven't found a replacement yet and then uh, I'll try and power it up and see if we're getting anything coming out of the transformer. Obviously nothing's ever quite as simple as uh, you'd hope. The original socket was riveted in, uh, so what I've had to do is uh, obviously drill it out and then I've um, countersunk the holes to accept um, countersunk M3 bolts. So I'll get it all uh, reassembled uh, as far as this back panel is concerned and then see if we're getting any power out of the transformer. Okay, so that's the replacement socket in place. I've refitted the fan and reconnected everything on the back panel. I haven't reconnected this to the motherboard yet. I want to make sure that uh, we're getting something sensible out of the transformer before I do that. I've bypassed the mains power switch. So if I now apply mains power to this panel, then we should see the fan start up and we should start seeing some AC voltage on this connector. So I'll just get a, a meter in place, get uh, AC volts, let's move this across so you can see it. Okay, so I'll power up the uh, workbench. I've got a workbench on a remote control so I can turn it on and off uh, remotely without having to reach over the equipment. It's uh, a lot safer, especially with mains powered stuff like this. There's always a possibility that um, the capacitor could explode or uh, even the socket could explode. So I'll now power this up. And the good news is we have the fan starting. I think that's probably the quietest fan I've ever not heard. Okay, now I'll try measuring the voltages on this connector and I think that this end connector is the center tap. This is a single sided connector so don't worry that I'm shorting out the two sides. Obviously you can't do that on the other sockets on the machine because they are double sided but this is a single sided socket so there's no danger of shorting anything out from one side to the other but just be careful if you do this. Okay so I think that's the center tap. And as you can see on the meter, we have around 20 volts. 20 volts, so that's the plus minus windings for the outer winding, the high voltage winding. And then we should have two lower voltage windings, 17 volts and 17 volts. Okay, so it looks like all the windings are intact at least with no load on them. So I will now plug the back panel back into the motherboard and make sure we're not getting any weird behaviour and then I'll put the um, power supply back in and see what's going on there. I will do some quick testing on the power supply board before I plug it in just to make sure there's no uh, uh, obvious faults with that and to make sure it wasn't that power supply board that uh, took out the uh, power switch and the main socket. Okay, that's the rear panel back on. 
and um, what we'll do now before I plug the power supply board in is uh, recheck the voltages on the connector that goes to the power supply board. If you recall from the first video we should have um, two centre tapped windings so I'll start with the uh, low voltage winding and then we'll have a look to see if the high voltage winding is there as well. Turn the bench back on and the machine fan has started up. It's a bit noisy now it's in the uh, machine. Okay so we're looking for connection N51A H and J has been the centre tap. And we want connections A and B. I'll cover the meter, it might uh, actually help. And we have one of the low voltage windings there. If you remember, it was 17 volts for the low voltage windings. And then C and D for the other side. Again, 17 volts, and now we're looking for E and F. That's one side, 20 volts, and the other side, 20 volts. So that's uh, perfect, that's exactly what we're expecting. So we know up to this point now we are getting power that will go into the main board. I will check these devices um, before I plug this board in, uh, just to make sure we're not going to uh, blow anything up and then I will check the, uh, the board uh, itself to make sure it's giving out the proper voltages. Okay, so I've plugged the power supply card back in. I did a thorough inspection before I put it back in and did find a couple of faults. The main one was the 5 volt regulator pass transistor was open circuit. It was open between emitter and collector so that's not too bad as long as it wasn't caused by excessive voltage on the 5 volt rail. Uh, there was also a, um, a short or partial short in this capacitor so I've replaced that and I've replaced the transistor. The rest seems fine, I can't do a full test of the ICs of course um, until power is applied and then see if they actually work but I did test between the uh, pins and ground and I can't find any shorts anywhere so um, Hopefully it should work uh, fine. So, so the next step is to power it up. Now there are test points marked on the card, but unfortunately they're marked on the side that we can't see when it's plugged in. You can get extender risers for this machine, but I don't have any. So I'll have to test the cards with them in place. Uh, so what I've done is just make a few uh, notes as to where the test points can be accessed from the rear of the card. So I'll power it up and um, we'll test the various voltages and make sure that they are correct. I've powered the machine up. So no smoke, no pops or bangs. So the fan's a bit noisier than uh, it was when the machine was uh, disassembled fully. This is a mistake that a lot of manufacturers do seem to make and it just all surprised me. Is when you have a fan and you put something very close to it, such as a wire mesh, then it makes a lot of noise. In fact, it's how some sirens work. Uh, so if they left a two or three millimeter gap or put the mesh on the outside, it'd be almost totally silent. So that does seem a bit of a, an oversight, but um, I suppose uh, the, the owner could modify it if they wanted to. Okay, so I'm going to measure everything with respect to ground. So the first voltage should be minus 12. And that is fully regulated, so it should be fairly close. Minus 11.9, so that's fine. The next one, looking at the diagram, is plus 19.5 volts, but this is only partially regulated, so it might be a bit on the high side, which it is. A couple of volts high, but that will almost certainly drop down to its regulated range once there's a load applied. Same with the next one, it's um, specified at plus 16, but I suspect it will be on the, it will be on the high side. It is at uh, almost 19 volts, but again, that's only partially regulated, so that should return to normal once um, there are cards plugged into the motherboard. 
The next one is plus 5 volts. This is fully regulated, so it should be fairly close to 5 volts. 5.1, that's fine. And the next one is plus 12 volts. Again, fully regulated, so it should be fairly close. Plus 12.07, so that's fine. What I'm going to do now is leave it running like this for an hour or so, just to make sure that all the capacitors are reformed if they need to, and also if there are any uh, faults on this board. Um, it'll go bang on its own and it won't take out any of the other cards which are of course much harder to repair. In the next video, if this survives, what I'll start doing is putting the cards in one at a time. Uh, as I do come to each card, I'll fully explain its function and go over the circuits and how it works. This should be fairly interesting because, as I mentioned in the previous video, this is a discrete logic based processor system, so um, it will be quite interesting looking at the cards each card forms a building block of the microprocessor system so it makes it very interesting to go over each one to show how that particular function works within this system. Okay so that's it for this video as I say in the next one we'll start looking at the cards in turn. Uh, any comments um, please let me know.